As it turns out, we don't have to look too far for the answer. As it's at the very beginning of this chapter in Ephesians, it's the lesson that we read last week. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So, as we learned in our epistle reading today, that to be wise is to understand the will of God. Okay, got it. And what's the Lord's will for us? Well, it says to be imitators of God. Okay, okay. Uh, but what specifically are we imitating? Well, it tells us Christ's love for us. Whew, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a tall order to me. To imitate Christ's love. Hmm. If I were to ask you to describe Christ's love, what adjective do you think you'd come up with? Powerful? All-encompassing? Unrelenting, maybe? Determined? Hmm, I got it. Stubborn. Surely it was the stubbornness of Christ's love that compelled him to continue teaching his followers, even when they kept getting it wrong. It was Jesus' stubborn love that forgave Peter and God's resurrection, resurrecting grace that utilized no other than Peter to build the church after Jesus ascended. It was Christ's stubborn love that led him to death on the cross for the world. And it's that same stubborn love that the author of Romans references when he writes, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God stubbornly loves us. That's right. God is so determined to love us that God will not let anything get in the way of God's love for us. Through grace, God resurrects this vice of stubbornness and makes it a holy virtue, a strength when it was once a weakness. Friends, what I'm proposing today is going to sound shocking, and I'm pretty sure you'll never hear it in church again. I want you to be stubborn. I want you to be very, very stubborn. I want you to stubbornly love those around you. But God is not just calling you to love those who are easy to love. God wants you to stubbornly love each other across differences as God has stubbornly loved us. God is calling you to stubbornly love those that you don't understand. God is calling you to stubbornly love those that have hurt you. God is calling you to stubbornly love those with whom you disagree. This is important, so I'm going to say it again. God is calling you to stubbornly love those with whom you disagree. By stubbornly loving others, we allow God's resurrecting power to work in our lives. It might look like continuing to disagree, but it also might look like forgiveness and peace. It's easy to think that forgiveness is taking an easy way out, but real forgiveness takes obscenely stubborn love as you doggedly commit to loving someone who has done you harm long enough for God's grace to transform your fear and anger into peace and hope. And real forgiveness imitates Christ's own stubborn love, not in letting someone off the hook, but in moving them towards repentance and repair. As Mother Ann Richards never tired of teaching us, forgiveness is the resurrection's power at work in our daily lives. By threading our disagreements and hurts with stubborn love, we might glimpse Christ's own stubborn love for us. Amen. Oh,